there's a concept, uh, having investment or having ownership, feeling ownership in a thing. And I uh, just wanted to chat about that a, a bit today because I've noticed it in various walks of life. I've noticed it from employees. I've noticed it from other people who we were considering investing in a business with. Uh, I, I've noticed from it just a, a lot of people who don't seem to get this concept. And I think maybe it hasn't been explained well, and I, and I hope to do so better and kind of uh, get across the idea that that might help somebody in the future uh, demonstrate that they do in fact feel ownership of something. Um, so the first time that this really came into uh, my mind as being a huge deal was oh probably it was more than fifteen years ago. This was before there was a big deal being made out of the whole uh, Somalian pirates uh, stuff. And since the Captain Phillips or whatever movie came out, it's gotten a lot more popular. But this was before all of that mess. And it was still kind of an unknown thing. And I was a police officer at the time and had a, uh, a partner of mine who was also a retired uh, Navy guy. And I guess he was still in as a reserve or something like that. But he, he'd been in for 20 years, knew a lot of folks. And his particular, I don't know if they call it in the Navy, if it's MOS or whatever, but his thing was um, maritime security. Uh, like he had the experience being on the boats that would uh, go alongside the Maersk uh, big shipping container ships and uh, provide security for them. And he just really knew that industry. Well, I was kind of into the executive protection industry at the same time. And so, of course, we chatted back and forth. We worked some details together in executive protection. And as it turned out, he has a buddy who was uh, getting out of the Navy and was interested in getting this uh, a private maritime security company going. And my wife and I were doing okay at the time financially, and, and we had some great mentors that were, were working closely with us, and they had a good bit of money. And in talking to my buddy about this, I said, you know, this could be an investment. Um, it seems like his buddy and my friend, those two guys were going to kind of be the owners, leaders of it, but they didn't have any capital to put into this new venture, and they didn't have any uh, business, any real business knowledge. Well, my wife has the business knowledge, and I had some security knowledge and have some good ideas, and so we thought, you know, maybe this could be good for all of us to get together on this thing. So my buddy sets up a meeting, and uh, my wife and I go to his house, and the the Buddy's buddy has a, a whole PowerPoint set up for us, does a, a good job on it. Um, and we're thinking, hey, this is a really good investment. You know, maybe we'll put in a quarter of a million. Maybe we'll talk to our mentors. They'll want to put in half a million, a million, something like that. And that's a way better way to bootstrap a an international maritime security company than with, you know, Ten or twenty or thirty thousand dollars, which is what these two would have been able to come up with. So one of the questions, as we're asking various questions about the business and, and their projections, one of the questions was uh, from my wife to the guy, um, "How invested are you in this?" And the guy took it. He had no idea of this concept, and this is why it kind of exploded in my mind at the time. He got so offended by that. I've been serving our country for, and he didn't say this to a star face. He just kind of said, well, I, you know, I'm invested and didn't really say more. And then I hear shortly thereafter from my buddy that he was just went off the deep end and was yelling and cussing. I'm never going to work with those people. Um, and they have no idea how invested I am. I spent 13 years fighting for my country in the Navy or whatever and blabbered on about that and didn't understand what invested means. So here's what it meant in that sense. If you were just doing your job as a Navy dude, Navy maritime security dude, and you were getting paid for it, and that's all, that's a, a bit of a time investment, but you kind of were getting paid for that along the way. That's not like if you had gone out and spent 13 years not getting paid, just building up a huge body of knowledge. And so... This guy was probably really good at maritime security and understanding how Somali pirates work and how to best uh, discourage them from attacking our client ships, etc. But he he didn't show that he had put a certain amount of money in. That's what my wife meant by investment. Have you put money into this? Have you sent out 300 letters to various important people at shipping companies? Um, do, have you formed relationships with the Somalian princes, not the one who's giving away uh, $26 billion, but the other ones, have you, do you have relationships with the government officials in those areas who would grease the, grease the way to have this company happen in their waters and such? And 
that's what we meant by investment. How much energy, how much capital, how much money, how much whatever have you put into this thing? Um, and he just completely didn't get it, blew us off. And as it turns out, it was he started his own little thing, and I'm sure he did okay. But it did not turn out to be what it could have if my wife had managed it and run it. it, it my life would have taken such a different turn. I probably wouldn't have become a voluntarist. I would probably... Uh, I'd be like Blackwater, like I'd be this super rich guy who's in trouble for all the stuff we did. Um, and yeah, it, it wouldn't have been a good good thing in the long run. But man, oh man, I'd have been rich. That idea, we were in at the ground floor and it all didn't work out because some dude didn't understand the meaning of the word invested. Okay, so now let's let's look at another way that it can be meant. The, sh the showing ownership or feeling ownership. Um, recently in our business, I got a message, as I expect from my uh, one of my guys, and he says, hey, we need more of this thing. And it was going to be, you know, four or five grand. And, and so I said, oh, okay, you sure we don't have it? I thought we did. He's, yep, there's there's none in the, the storage area. And I said, oh, okay, well, I'll get on it and order it. So I made this order. And then I went and checked the storage area later and it was there just in a, a different area but very easily findable well it wasn't his let's say 4500 bucks it wasn't his 4500 bucks he didn't feel ownership it didn't it didn't come out of his pocket he didn't feel the bite from having to spend too much on inventory and yeah we're it's not horrible that we have it but it's not it's not good business practices for what we have there and in backup storage it wasn't a good move to get more at that time but I trusted him and did so. And it, it's kind of dawned on me. He doesn't feel ownership. It, it's not costing him a single thing. Another uh, guy yesterday was saying, hey, this certain piece of equipment isn't working so well. Um, and one of the other guys who does kind of have that sense of ownership says, hey, well, I, I think there's a way we can fix that. And then I said, "That's it. yeah, let's work on that. In the meantime, I'll get some extras pieces of this equipment just so we know we have it and for the future. And the other guy says, yeah, I think that'd be a great idea. And I appreciate him agreeing with me, but I was I was thinking, and I actually mentioned, yeah, why don't we all chip in to buy more of these? Um, yeah, and I'm making the ultimate profit from the venture, and it's my capital that should be putting into it. It's not other people's responsibility to chip in and buy. However, uh, it made me think. Well, yeah, it's easy for him. I, I placed the order this morning. It was 388 bucks. I got four of the things. And so it's not a huge deal. But... It, it, it's a bite. It's $388 that I can't spend on something else that I want to spend. I'm spending it on making sure that the guys have better tools and equipment and, and such to work with. And, and there's no appreciation for that. And that is a total lack of a sense of ownership or a feeling of ownership. So how do you, if you are, if you're an employee kind of person, how do you acquire this ownership feeling? How, how do you come about getting this? Um, is it hopeless if you don't own a business? I would say no. I would say it's more of an, an empathy thing. It is, uh, rather than just thinking how things are from your perspective, put yourself in the perspective of your boss and say, uh, and not necessarily your supervisor, but the ultimate boss, the owner of the company. And if it's Walmart, put yourself in the shoes of the Walton family or the, the investors or whomever. And don't be thinking, oh, they may have so much money, it doesn't matter. No, think that. Every penny matters, and where it should. Uh, if not, they're not going to do well in business. So think about it from their perspective. Um, why don't we just pay our employees an extra five dollars an hour? And if we did that, everybody'd have a living wage. Well, look, do a little math, and then you'll realize why that isn't happening. I, also, if you know economic, understand economics at all, you'll understand why it isn't working. But let's say you work for Walmart, and you're thinking. I should be able to have a new apron to wear every week. And they're only giving me one every six months, and they expect me to make it last. They expect me to look good, but it gets frazzled, and, and this is messed up. I deserve a new apron. Well, think about it from the owner's perspective. Do you think an owner, a typical owner is probably working 12 to 16, 18 hours a day, seven days a week for the first five or 10 years. Uh, maybe they take a vacation after a few years and they'll take a week or two weeks and get away and rejuvenate. But they're not like an employee who's getting two days off every single week and is only working eight hours a day. They're exhausted. They're scrambling. They're scrounging. And that apron, that little $10 apron, that $10 has to come from somewhere. Do you want it to come from your salary? 
like, or your, your hourly wage, if they came to you and they said, hey, how about for this apron, we know you want one every week, how about we split it and you're making 10 bucks an hour, how about every week you give us half an hour of free work and then we'll chip in an extra five bucks and then you can have that new apron you want every week. Would you still want an apron every week? You'd say, well, no, that's their responsibility. Well, if it's looking frazzled and they don't like it, then yeah, it does turn out to be they need to either teach you how to maintain it better or fire you and find somebody who takes care of their stuff better. Or maybe they do decide to buy it on a more frequent basis. But try to put yourself in their shoes and understand how they feel as the owners. Um, and yeah, the Walton family isn't working 18 hours a day, seven days a week right now. They're they're The flywheel is going and they've got good stuff coming in, as do all the people who have stock there. And I'm very happy for them for that. Uh, but they should still be thinking about it. I mean, the principle remains the same. There isn't a certain point that now all of a sudden you're making more than $23,000 a year, uh, or what is it, $36,000 a year is the poverty level, I think. Okay, now you're making thirty seven dollars a year. Now money no matter no longer matters. You just burn it with cigars and to light your cigars. And Well, no, that's not the case. Even when you have hundred grand a year income or a million a year income or $100 million a year income, you're still thinking about stuff. Um, you, you know, you think about it, a billionaire, a billionaire isn't completely able to go out and do whatever they want. Like if you go buy the, the nicest private plane and the nicest private yacht out there, yeah, you've gone over your limit. You spent more than a billion bucks. And the person who has a billion isn't even a billion in liquid assets, probably. They probably have 950 million of it in their companies. Um, so they don't have that much liquid and of that other 50 million, it's not like it's just sitting there in their wallet. They're waiting to spend it. Um, even the folks who you think are very, very wealthy, uh, they're still watching the dollars and just because they happen to be your boss and they have more money than you doesn't mean they don't feel the pain of small stuff. So that's kind of my little quick thought on, uh, feeling that sense of ownership and on being invested in a project or a company or whatever. My suggestion is, of course, if you want to do well in the organization that you're currently in and you want to be courted by other organizations, feel that sense of ownership. Work hard. Pretend you're the owner. Pretend that putting in that extra little bit of work um, is what's necessary to make it happen. I, we had a, an employee yesterday that says, hey, I'm just so exhausted after the, it was it was this person's Friday. And they said, oh, I'm just so exhausted. I saw a call come in three minutes after I left, but I'm not going to do it. Well, that call could have turned into 1750 bucks gross for our business today. It had to be answered right then. Well, guess who the, where the buck stopped? My wife. She took care of it and she did the necessary follow-up phone calls and such. It's an employee who thinks, hey, it's the end of the work day. I'm going to clock out and it's all done. No, it's not. The world keeps turning. What can you do to make your organization more successful? That is feeling a sense of ownership.